It's Howard! It's a good save by the world's strongest man. The world's most agile man, did you see that save? It's Russell Howard against Stoltman, it's, it's saved. saved! And what a save it was! Straight down the middle, and the world's strongest man bats it away. Hey guys, so we are going to do a post soccer aid chat. Uh, a few questions, see how I got on and who I enjoyed spending the most time on. So let's do it. How did the training go compared to your normal training? Alright, I was training Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so I did three days football training. Obviously there's pros and celebs. Um, I was goalkeeping training, so I had Petr Cech in my World XI team, so I was training with him and David James and Dave Hare were on the first day. Uh, it was very fun, you know, the first day was kind of just seeing how we were getting on, just, you know, getting some shots into us, a few wee drills and stuff. But I was very, very fatigued after the first day. I think I still carrying a lot of weight from roads and just out of breath and <laughs> felt like I wouldn't be able to do it. Then the second and third day of the training was more um, just me and Petr Cech. I was getting into it more, you know, we were doing some, uh, like, dives down to the left, dives down to the right, shots into the hand, some wee footwork drills and stuff, and then having games where the pros were kicking into us. Petr Cech was doing some more advanced things, but I was just learning the basics of goalkeeper and I started getting into it more. Um, you know, we had some really good drills, you know, Petr Cech taught me really good, the goalkeeper and top coaches were teaching me really well as well, I was really enjoying it. Um, a lot of explosive power with uh, football and a lot of conditioning, a lot of hit training, you're doing short bursts, you know, you're needing to be fast and reflex and stuff as well, so they're, I mean, strong man and uh, football never go together and so much different than what I'm used to with all these short wee bursts and up and down all the time and stuff, but I really enjoyed it and Peter Cech was a very good mentor for me, so I learned a lot. And would you say P Peter Cech, did he teach you the most during the, the time there or? Yeah, obviously. I was with Petr Cech on the pitch, so you know, obviously he taught me the most. Um, he was a player I was probably around, around with the most on the pitch as well, for obvious reasons. Um, he kind of just taught me. I was, I was also, you know, looking how his position was. Obviously, like I said, the coaches were giving him a bit more advanced drills, so I was looking at where his feet were, how he was in the goal, you know, what he was doing and stuff. And he was telling me a few wee things as well. You know, he was to keep my shoulders relaxed and, and hunched over so when I put my hands it was just easy so all these wee things he was telling me when I did it and tried it myself you know it, kept, it helped me it was like that wee one percent that really helped me in like the other training games and in the actual game itself so yeah Petr Cech I, hadn't, I was he taught me the most by an absolute country man so. and who do you think surprised you the most when you were there out of all the slaves like as in skill wise Noah Beck and Ken. I mean, I didn't even I didn't know who really Noah Beck was to be honest. With you. Uh, Sinead and all them. I knew he, he was a TikToker, and I didn't really know his background. I didn't know he even played football. Uh, he said he played football, but I didn't know he played at, a, at such a high level that he was playing at. So he was unbelievable. He used to be a professional footballer, and yeah, you can see he played football. His skills, his touches, the way he was doing stuff in training, and his movement as well. And then Ken. You know, from Love Island and stuff as well. He was really rapid and yeah, he had a good few touches as well. So those two guys really shocked me. They were very good footballers. So in your time there, did you secure any future collaborations? And if so, could you tease us with it? Yeah, so every single one I was a person I was there wants to collab with Tom Stoughton, so yeah. No, I mean, I didn't really ask much, you know, I mean, I was more there for football and, you know, you just let whatever happens in the future happens, you know, obviously I, have a lot of contacts now, but and a lot of them don't do YouTube. Like the only guys that are really there do YouTube are chunks, you know, you know, they got H and all that. They don't none of them kind of do the, the YouTube kind of thing. So you weren't really in soccer, it's not really a thing for YouTube. And um, but yeah, I mean I, I talked to chunks a wee bit, you know, maybe it might something might happen with that or you know, something might happen in the future, but nothing nothing I've planned yet just now, you know, so we'll just see what happens. But yeah, I've got all the contacts now as well. Maybe not YouTube, but we might you know, do stuff out with YouTube or, you know, maybe do TV programs or something, but yeah, something will happen, but who knows what. And how did it compare to the likes of a Giants Live show? So when we go out in Giants Live, we've got maybe 10,000 people, but then going out there at the London Stadium in front of 60,000 screaming fans, how was that for you? I'm not gonna lie, it was the best day of my life. I mean, the yeah, one world strongest man, I've seen crowds at Giants Live and stuff, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows I love football and 
to stand out in front of 50, 60,000. I always wanted to be a professional, so it kind of was the closest I could be to become a professional, and it was uh, yeah, an unbelievable feeling. But I think because I'm a professional as well, at Strawman, I kind of blocked out the the crowd. Like I didn't really hear the crowd. I didn't get overwhelmed and stuff. I mean, so I just kept focused on the job. But yeah, it was a massive atmosphere. The thing that got me was before the game when we walked around the stadium. We were, I was seeing like signs for myself. Can I get your top? I was seeing loads of Scotland flags. So it's nice to have support out of Strawman. You know, people actually travel to come see me in a football game. So yeah, it was really. A really good atmosphere, and I was so buzzing to be, you know, be part of it. So, and are the rumours true? The Rangers, Glasgow Rangers, have wanted to sign you up as a goalkeeper now. No comment. No. I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, some of the some people have uh, asked me to go down and do some goalkeeper training in them just before the season starts. So that'd be quite fun. Again, it's just some fitness for me, and just to be around some other goalkeeping stuff. So if you know, if goalkeeping's the way I go, who knows? But. Nah, no, no football teams are going to snap me up. I'm a bit too big for that and I still love Stroman. But yeah, let's see what happens in the future. Um, so I, I have had some messages from a few teams just saying, do you want to come down and have some fun with the goalkeepers and you know chill out and stuff? So that's quite a good, uh, you know, I must have made a good impression on TV. So. And do you think you'll carry on the football training uh, throughout your Strongman training? Yeah, I mean, I never had it. I always played football, even like last year before Rods, I played football. I, yeah, I play football all the time, but I think I'll start doing it more uh, properly with everyone, Luke, Simon and everyone in the office, because, you know what, we were burning up to about two and a half, three thousand calories in one training session. That one we were doing at a soccer aid, and that's just goalkeeping as well, so, um, you know, and that's much, and it's a lot of kind of, like I said, fast reflexes, condition, hit, hit stuff as well, so it'll benefit what we do. We do condition on Wednesday anyway, so instead of doing boring condition, you can, you play football, you know, and not like it doesn't feel like you're doing any exercise yet. So I'm gonna keep it up, and it's gonna be good. And you know, I might even join a local football team, you know, and just play that the rest of winter and see what happens. But uh, <laughs> let's just see what happens. But yeah, 100% going to play football every week I, uh, that I can. So the final one. So now that you've played in Soccer Aid, one of the biggest football matches of the of the season, do you think you'll be competing or playing for any other teams? such as, I believe, the Sidemen of a charity match. Do you think we can see you competing or playing there? I'll be going back to soccer at 100% and uh, I just want to be able to play as many stadiums as I can, which will be cool, you know? Um, and maybe do some other, like I said, charity matches. But even playing proper football, you know what I mean? I want to play like, I might, like I said, join every Gordon Football Club, Social Club or something and just play with them for a few games because I really I, I really enjoyed um, being out there. I thought I would hate being goals. I, I thought like, you know, I wouldn't enjoy the training, I wouldn't enjoy what it is like to be a goalkeeper, but I, it was a complete opposite for me. I actually enjoyed being in goal and having that responsibility of you know trying to stop the ball and having that pressure that you know obviously if the defenders miss it, it's all down to me. So yeah, I'm 100% going to play football for someone and try and do a few more charity matches and see what happens. But yeah, I'm not going to go say I'm doing this, doing that, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Soccer is all about raising money for UNICEF and all the kids around the world, you know, last yeah, they made 13 million. Uh, uh, the message was as soon as we came, went to uh, the training camp at Soccer that we wanted to raise at least 13 million and one pound. And by the time the game came, we were on 15 million 600. So <laughs> that was a massive, massive increase. So yeah, thank you to every single person that's donated. An amazing cause. Um, and I think you can still donate now. So keep on donating and let's see if we can get this total to even bigger, bigger heights. So thank you everyone. Thank you Soccer Aid for inviting me. We'll be back next year. And uh, hopefully Luke will be there as well. The Stoughton brothers playing football together, hey. But yeah, stay safe, smile and stay spicy and thanks for watching.